In this tutorial video, I'll show you how to create luminosity masks. I think many of you have heard of them, and also if you've seen my previous tutorial videos, you've seen that I use them very much for blending multiple exposures or for working on contrast. I learned about those masks through Tony Kuiper, who has some very good tutorials about using those masks and also on creating them, which you'll find on his blog, Good Light US Writing Tutorials. And you'll be on this side where you find the Luminosity Masks tutorial. And this tutorial, this is for free on his site, so you can work through the basic steps on creating the masks. And in the end, there's also a, a link where you can get, where you can purchase actions from Tony where those masks are created with one click and this is what I showed in my previous tutorials and what I'll show in other pr tutorials I just use his actions to create the whole set of masks but since there aren't many videos out there describing this process of mask creation I thought it's good if I, I do a short video about it and but before we start here Let's head back to his home. I want to show you his blog. And after you've learned how to create luminosity masks, you should head over to his blog from time to time. Because Tony has some very interesting posts there about uh, post-processing of some of his images, where he goes into detail about why and how he processed his images and also shows before and after and I think this is a place where you really learn a lot about luminance masks and other stuff Tony uses so this is a great place to go from time to time okay so enough enough talk let's go over to Photoshop um, this is a photo I recently captured on Jan's Causeway it's already completely processed and I'm currently doing a start to finish video about the whole processing which I'll announce when, when ready but for now i just show you how to create a set of luminance masks on th for this photo. Luminosity masks represent the brightness or darkness in the image and to create them we'll head over to the channels palette and for the first luminosity mask control click on the RGB channel and down here save the mask save the selection as channel <coughs> you'll see a gray image black and white image where the bright parts show what's selected if we control click on it later the dark parts sh is what what's not so selected you will also see that this um, selection represents the the real image and shows feathering, natural feathering and this is a nice thing about those masks if you use them that you'll not get halos or stuff in, in your image because those masks go along the edges of the image and describe the tonality in the image how it is and if you do adjustments through those masks those adjustments oh, usually will will look a little better than if, if you don't use them or just paint uh, manually then you'll most likely see some gradients or where you were using the adjustments okay I call this initial mask the lights and now we'll go on from here control click on the lights and control alt shift and again control click on the light which creates an intersection of the selection with itself and if we save it we see that this time the image gets darker and less is selected we'll re call this light lights control click on it control alt shift on it again and this gives us bright lights 
we can repeat it once more. Control click on it, Control Alt Shift on it, and this is really just the super lights where there's nearly everything black and just a little bit of the picture which is a little gray and see as we look at the picture we see that really that there, there is no part which is really um, white in this image or this I kept the tonality of the image very even over the exposure so the super lights it's just around here but since this is not complete white, the selection of those super lights will also it will be just just gray, just a partial selection. Okay. So now that we have the lights, we can create the same masks um, or selections for the dark values. And to do this, we'll create an invert. I still had selected the masks and you see this is what happens if I have such a luminosity mask selected and then create a one of those here it it will automatically load this mask into this but this is not what we want here so control D deselects the mask and alt delete makes it white here since white's the foreground. Okay, now I have an inverse of my image. I go back, control click on the RGB channel, save this selection and I get the darks. And I repeat the same step as for the lights. Control click darks, control alt shift on the same mask to get the dark darks. Same again. Control click on darks. Control Alt Shift on dark darks again to get the shadow darks and one final time Control Alt Shift to get the super darks and super darks really just selects the very dark tones in the image. We can now throw away this inverse again and see what this would be. Let's select the super darks. This is really just those areas here which are nearly black in the image. So with that with such a selection we can focus on, on those areas in our post processing. Okay, what what we also what we can do we can control on click on the darks, control shift I inverts the selection right away and save this and put this above the lights because you see here the lights. And this selects a little more and we call this just expanded lights. And the same, we need the lights. Control click, Control Shift I. Save this one as the expanded darks. And there's still more we can do. We can create mid-tone selections by Control R, A selecting everything, and and then we'll subtract um, selections. For example, let's start Control Alt. You'll see a little minus on the super lights. Subtracts the super lights, and then also let's subtract the super darks. Control Alt on this. And what we now create, this is, let's deselect the mask, Control D, and give this a name. This is the super mid tone selection. It selects nearly everything in the image, but will preserve the very bright areas and the very dark areas. We'll repeat this Control A and we'll subtract the bright lights, the shadow darks create <coughs> the white mid-tones and control A then subtract control alt light lights and the dark darks get the expanded mid-tones and one last time control A control alt darks control alt lights 
and now we'll get the basic midtones and this warning just tells you that there's nothing in the image select more than 50% selected so we're nearly uh, the mask when we look at it would this will be much gray and some darker and some brighter values and here will be a little bit of selection here even less and this is the basic midtones and it's I use it quite quite frequently for um, for curved layers and with this I can do a very strong S curve and have still a very clean looking image. Okay, so now you learned how to create the luminosity mask, the set of luminosity mask. You could now create your own action set to do this with one click or you could purchase Tony's action set which is very nice you can target sim separately every mask you, you want or you can create all masks with one click and this is a very good start in post-processing this is almost always the first thing I do when heading over to Photoshop I create all the luminosity masks okay thanks for listening bye bye